Good morning. My name is Shannon Stefanacci, and I am your mystery maker for Saturday. We are going to have some fun. We are going to be playing with air dry clay. So, um, real quick, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am located down in sunny Southwest Florida, and um, we have a lot of projects down here. We have a lot of fun, and I am very honored to be on the Iron Orchid Designs um, Facebook page. I've been a retailer for their products for a very long time, and I cannot speak highly enough about them. So, without any further ado, I want to show you what we're doing. So excited about this. Um, I'm going to raise my screen just a little bit behind me. See the silver trays? Everybody has silver trays laying around and um, using, using them for display or for whatever. Um, every time I go to a garage sale or a thrift store, I always pick them up because they are very affordable generally. So we're going to have fun with these. I'm going to show you a prototype. This is not the best one, but this is what we're gonna make. I'll put that aside. So I'm gonna take one off here and let's begin. We're gonna start with this big one. Let me split screen. And this is going to be the project. Now, for it to lay flat, I need to take the wall hanger off the back. Otherwise it won't lay flat. So let me just take that off real quick. And I simply have the trays hanging on the wall with these little guys that you get at um, Michael's or wherever, these are just the hangers or plate hangers. So here is this. Now, this is one of my favorite trays. I just love it. I love old silver trays. They are just so much fun. And they're just, I don't, I don't paint them or anything, but I just, I just love them. I have a whole collection of them. So today what we're going to do is we are going to add some fun because we are going to turn the silver tray wall into a photo wall. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have an old book page here and I'm going to be using the iron orchid designs, the stamp pad. It's got the stone ink on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply rub around the edges to give it a little bit more of an older look. See that? You can see where I put it and where I haven't put it yet. So I'm just going to simply go around the edge. And just give it a little bit of an older appearance. Again, this is just the stone ink that I have on their, their ink pad. It just gives it a little bit of an aged look. Can you see the difference? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some clear coat and I'm going to apply the book page. I'm going to actually put this on the back. Now, I was a little nervous when I first thought of this project. I was like, well, the glue stick? <laughs> but yes, it does. It does stick to the silver. I'm not going to put the clear coat on the top because I want it to look like the book page. I want it to look as, as authentic as possible you know, with, with layers. So I want it to stick up just a little bit. But with my clear coat on the back end, it's going to glue that to my tray. So I'm going to stick that to the side. Next, I have a picture. This is my son when he graduated. This was a senior picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to dress this up because this is kind of, this is plain just like this if I were to hang this on the wall. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take one of my new favorite molds, which I just love. love. This is the Harper mold. All the letters. So I'm going to put senior 2014, the year he graduated. Now... Whenever you're using the molds, it's always a good idea to go ahead and use some of the, let's see, I'll put it right here, the cornstarch, just so the letters pop out a little easier because some of them have very small integral parts and you want to make sure that you get the clay out in one piece. Okay, so let's spell that out, seniors. Now this S is really tight. You can see the little small, so I'm going to make sure I get that. Use a smaller brush. Make sure I get the cornstarch in there. S E, so senior and 
Oops, some old clay just popped out. I was playing a little bit earlier today. So where are you all joining from? Where's that? Here you are. Any other local Floridians? O and the R. I find it easier just to go ahead and get, if you can get as many letters as you can. Done. Okay, so I put the cornstarch in. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dump it in and get just a little bit of the excess out. And then I'm going to use my fave, the air dry client. This stuff is amazing. I already have one open, so let's get this one. Now with these molds, you'll notice there's a little lip here, a little rim, which makes it super easy and precise for whatever mold you're using. <clears throat> so let's start with the S. Oops. Sometimes <laughs> if you push a little too fast, when you have the cornstarch in there, they'll slip right out. The stick pushes back in. And then you simply just drag with your finger along the rim, and you'll get a perfect letter. And I'm just taking extra clay and making a pile out at the bottom so I can use it again. Okay, there's my S or the E. Now, Iron Orchid Designs has a lot of great products. They have transfers, which are beautiful. They make all of your projects just so much more lively. There is the E. Oops. Now we'll go to the N. And I'm not sure if you guys know, but there are some new designs coming out. I can't tell you or show you, but just be excited. There's new stuff coming. So make sure you check in with your local retailer or online. I posted the links here that you can see the, the retailers near you, or if you want to buy them online, there's your local or your online retailers. Okay, the eye. The eye's a little tricky. <clears throat> it's fun to pop off that little dot, but we can do it. And it's really, it's really fast to do this because with this little rim, it's super easy to get that clay in and get it perfect. It's probably looking a little messy on the screen, but it'll be beautiful when it's finished. Okay. S E N I O. Oh, there. Oh, I knew I was forgetting a letter. Oh, super, super easy. I really wanted to use, whoops, I really wanted to use the mermaid mold, but I didn't think my son would appreciate that on his, his picture. All right, put this stuff aside. Now I'm gonna pop them out. Now keep in mind, these are fragile letters, but I can rebend them and mold them while I'm moving them on my project. So I'm going to go in order. All I'm going to do is simply push up from the back and then kind of just try to ease them out. On the S, it's so fragile on the edges. I'm going to try to grab the thicker part of the S. And here she comes. Yes is the one that generally gives me, I'm just to take the R out because he's ready to go. <clears throat> the S generally gives me a hard time, but I'm going to be really patient and look up. Oh, yep, I did it. Yes. Let's see if I can get this in the picture here. There's S for senior. Come back for the E. I'm do the same thing. I'm just going to push it out and just lightly because the bottom portion of the E right here is very small so you want to be sure you don't break them when it comes out now the n i'm just going to shake off the here's the n and if you accidentally maybe have a little bit of you just pull it off i overlooked that when i was making my letters here we go the n And now the I. I 
And this is always fun, this little guy. But he comes, he pops right out. Look at that. Whoops. Where'd he go? Hold on. He's running away. There he is. See? Put this right here. And the O. Oh, I'll put this to the side. Senior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on with just, I, what I've been using is just the wood glue and it does stick to these trays. So I have some wood glue here. Get my little board ready. This one. Now I have it, if you notice, I haven't put glue in my picture yet. What my goal was is I was going to put these on and leave part of the iron uh, or the clay up a little bit so I could tuck the picture behind the word senior. I did that with the, my prototype and then I'm going to put 2014 at the top and leave a little bit of that over it so it'll hold my picture. So I'm simply just not going to apply wood glue where I want the picture to sit. That way I can interchange the picture because I do have a few different pictures. But you can also do this with other pictures. Uh, maybe your Christmas card every year and you can just change it out. So maybe not put the year, you know, use a Christmas tree instead and just put, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Because I know most people send out the picture Christmas cards. Okay, my E is becoming a little mouse shaped because I've been touching it. There we go. And the nice thing about these, when you put them on, even though they're not quite dry, you can still go ahead and paint them or whatever you're going to do with them. And we will get to that in a little bit. So here's the M. And I'm just making sure to skip the top where I'm going to put the, the picture behind it so there won't be any glue there, but there'll be glue on the rest to hold it into place. And no, your letters might not be perfect, but that's okay. That's not what you're going for here. You're going here to display your photo. Now, I'm going to have a little difficulty with the eye because I don't want to glue it on my picture. So I might just leave the dot off. I'll decide that in a little bit. So I'm just going to put him to the side. Senior. Oh, <laughs> big clutchy fingers. <laughs> Oops, I got a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to get that off because I don't want it to stick to my photo. There we go. So essentially what we have here is um, I glued down the bottom part but I didn't glue the top so my photo could slide behind there so I can change it out. So now I'm going to put 2014 across the top. Okay, so let's go back to my mold. And let me get my little brush for the cornstarch. And I'm just going to simply do, put the cornstarch in the two, the one, Zero and four. Shake out extra and then go to my air dry clay. And I'm just pushing it in. Again, these rims are really, really makes it so easy to get the exact amount of clay in that you need and clean up the edges. Okay, there's the zero. It's hard to believe that my my firstborn graduated high school in 2014. And what's even harder to believe now is I have a senior right now. We just had our senior portraits taken, but I don't have anything printed up yet. So I'll have to make her one. Okay. I've got some buildup on my finger here, so I'm just trying to get it off so I can make sure I get a nice 
clean edge on here. And finally, the four. This one is very intricate, so I want to make sure that I have enough clay in there. So when I'm pulling it out, I don't totally rip it apart. So I'm just going to go really slow when I pop these out. And again, I'm just pushing from the back. And try to bend it down a little bit so I can just kind of lightly pull it out. Hopefully, there we go. Put them over here. I'm nervous about the four, so I'm going to do it last. One. The two. Again, try to always grip it wherever the thicker part of your letter or number is. Okay, here goes a four. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go up from this side because this is the, the stronger, the thicker side. Let's see if I can do this here. Oh, it's popping out nicely just by me simply bending. I can see that it's loose. Everything's loosening except for right here. Let me see if I can get it all out. Just going to go really slow. Ah! Yay! <laughs> okay, so let's lay that back here. Let me clean this off over here. And I'm going to bring this over here so you can see. Again, I'm going to apply the 2014. I'm only going to put the glue at the top because I just want the bottom part to hold my photo. Just in case I want to use the photo again for something different or maybe stick a different photo in, I don't want to make sure I, I lock it into this tray. So I'm applying the glue, leaving the bottom unglued. But the, this clay will harden, so it will help hold the picture on. Now, you could use all different things. You, instead of just using just a plain tray, you can paint your tray. You can uh, decoupage paper on the tray. Oh, I forgot. I get talking and forget. I'm just going to wipe off that glue on the bottom of my zero. Uh, you can use all kinds of fabric. Cynthia, I just saw your comment. That's awesome. And the four. Making sure I don't have any glue on the bottom of that four because I want to make sure that the picture is reusable. Here we go. So look how cute. Now we're not done by any means. We are going to have some more fun with this. Um, I do want this to dry real quick. We're going to work on another one. Oh, I have an angry face. Why is me angry? No, <laughs> no angry face. Okay. Let me put this one to the side and I'm going to grab another tray up here. Cause I have a different one in the mold that I want to show you and how cute this one's going to be. So I'm going to get this oval one off. Again, I simply have these hung on the wall with the picture and the plate hanger so that at Michael's or Joanne's or wherever. Um, I, I like the black and white photos. So I have a cute picture of my niece. I found this picture um, when I was looking for some black and whites to hang on these trays. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply use a little bit of clear coat. I've already taken the stamp and made it dark just to save some time. I'm going to st stick the paper on. The paper I'll be able to get off if I ever want to take it off the tray later. Again, I'm only putting the clear coat on one side of the paper because I want it to be where it looks like an old photo. I don't want it to look like it's part of the tray. I want it to look like it's in layers. Okay, so, and I want it a little off-center, just a tad. And then I'm going to put my niece here. Okay, so now the fun begins. I want to use the Monarch 
because she's pretty like a, and she's going to fly like a butterfly. She is a senior at Ole Miss, and I'm so excited for her. Um, so let's go and grab some cornstarch to make sure that the air dry clay pops easily out of another part thinking which butterfly. So I might do a couple. I'm going to start with this guy right here. Let me just push her out of the way just a little so you guys can see the butterfly. I'm just going to put it, brush some of this. Ooh, whoops. I used my, <laughs> my glue brush. Darn it. I was wondering why the starch was it was not. Where did it go? under my tray. Here it is. I was wondering why the corn starch wasn't spreading. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. That's more like it. Now, as you can see, I have way too much here. All you simply do is just shake it out. And grab some clay. And then these also have that beautiful rim that makes it really easy. So I'm just going to slide my clay in there, push it down, making sure to fill the mold because these butterflies have some great detail on them. And I'm going to run my finger right over the, the rim to create my edge of the butterfly. Some people use scrapers. I just like to use my fingers. Go along the edge, make sure I got it. Okay, so now we're going to pop him out real easy. I'm going to push from the back and, it and kind of turn it over. It should just pop out really easily. Let's go. Now look at how cute he is. See how cute he came out? So I'm going to strategically be placing the butterflies around her to hold the photo. So I'm going to do another one real quick. And I like this guy over here. Just going to dust the mold. So I'm sure since you guys are watching, you guys are IOD fans like I am. What is your favorite mold? I really, really, really love mermaid. But you can't put mermaids on everything. So... What, tell me what your favorite mold is. Another one that I really like is the keyhole molds. Um, when you have, like, I also paint furniture, so it's like a dresser and it just needs some extra touches to it. So adding those keyholes really add a nice element to it. Okay, so again, I'm just going around the edge, but I have such buildup on my fingers. Actually, let me just take a wipe, and I'm just going to clean my fingers real quick so I can get that nice edge. Um, I see there's some questions here. There's a lot of things coming in. Um, if I don't see your questions live, I always go back on my videos and answer every single question. So if I don't catch it here, I'll make sure I tag you in the comment. Sometimes I get lost in my project and I don't really see the screen. Oh, I'm sorry about the feedback. My volume's turned all the way down. It's probably because I'm using two different um, sources. Pretty one. You're going to put him over here. And then I'm just going to do one other one. I can do more off camera, but this will just give you an idea of what, what it's going to look like. I, mean, I want to put one more over here just so I make sure that that picture will stay. But I'm just going to choose a smaller one. Let's do, let's do this one right here. Again, this way just makes trimming back the clay so much easier. I tend to put too much clay on because when these dry, they can shrink. So you definitely don't want to stress what you're putting on. But it's also, I always find that when you use one piece of clay as a 
opposed to like putting different pieces in, you'll get less crackings when it dries. This one out. Oh, look at this one. How cute are you? So then I'm going to put the butterfly right up here. And then later on, I could put more over. So let me just get this stuff out. Of here. Well, let's glue this on. Of course, I have cornstarch in my brush, but I'm not going to be doing any more cornstarch. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my cornstarch brush and my glue backwards. So strategically where I place these butterflies, I want to make sure that I don't put any glue on the part of the butterfly that's going to hold the picture. If you have a hard time putting your glue on, like maybe it's too big, you can add just a little bit of water and that would be helpful. Okay, there's one. Now, these won't um, be able for me to hang on the wall when I get done with these right yet. So I will be posting pictures on my Facebook page and on, in the comments here. So I'll be happy to show what the final wall display will look like but at least you'll get to see what the projects look like i just don't want to hang them on the wall because i want to make sure that the molds stay in place i don't want to have to tape them down if you're doing the molds and you're doing an address or something it's okay to use some low-tech tape but okay so i'm going to stick kenzie to the side for a minute we're going to go back to this one because we're going to dress this one up First of all, yes, it's still drying, but we're going to just add a little bit of gilding wax. Just, we're going to kind of try to blend with these colors. So I'm going to just start with the, the bronze. Any gilding wax will work. And gilding wax, always, I love using my finger because I, I like to feel the touch. So I'm just going to trace over. And you can see that there, you can still see the white air dry clay, but you can also see the gilding wax on top. So it kind of creates like a 3D different layer. And what I like to do is I like to use a couple different colors. So it looks like the tray. It's these several trays, you can see several different layers and different shades of colors. So I like to also go back and maybe add a little gold. So I'm, I'm sure I, I can see it on my screen. You should be able to see on yours. I'm going to start with the gold up here. I have to be careful of the parts that are not glued down because I don't want them to bend. There we go. And I'm going to now use a little bit. I'm going to use some, what do I think? Here it is. Some zinc, which is a little bit darker. I'm not going to use a lot. I'm just going to add very little. just a little bit more dimension and now I'm going to go back to the 2014 and add the first color I used <clears throat> the bronze up top I'm just trying to create you know a look of that kind of looks like a tray. all different shades of the metallics also what you can do with the gilding wax to dress these up you can, I can put some on the edge so I'm going to take this color which is the bronze, and I'm just going to lightly rub my finger along the, the edges here because this is where all the detail is. It's very, very subtle, but this subtlety makes a huge addition. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the camera, but it makes a huge difference. That's gorgeous. I cannot wait to hang these up. Of course, I need to wait to my... <laughs> They dry, but okay, so that's now I want to go back. I want to give it a little bit dark too, so I'm going to add a little bit of the zinc here and there. You can use whatever kind of gilding wax you want, you can even maybe dust a little paint on it. 
just to add some more dimensions here, look at how much that has, just that little bit of gilding wax has transformed and added to this. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. So I'm gonna do one final thing to this one. And I, I'm just gonna test it. I was thinking maybe putting some raffia. Raffia always makes everything look better. So I'm just gonna tie some up here on the handle and we'll take a peek at what it looks like. I've never done this, so I'm just, or at least done a silver tray with my son's picture. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Ta-da! So imagine this hanging on the wall. Let's see if I can. So this is the finished product of the first tray that was on this part of my wall back here. So I'm gonna stick Dominic to the side and then we'll bring back Denise, Kenzie and we're going to finish her. Now, technically you want butterflies to be you know, bright and beautiful. However, I want to stay in the theme of the tray. So this one has more of a black appearance on it. So I want to use some, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stay with some bronze. So I'm going to just lightly dust right on here. And I like the color of the clay underneath because it needs some, some lightness to it because these are so dark. You can use paint. You can use the, um, of course, the iron with the ink. They come in all different beautiful colors and you can mix them too because they come, you have all the primary colors. So if you know how to mix, make your colors. So there's that one. And it doesn't transform that well on the camera, but it is pretty. I'm gonna dust a little bit of gold and the gold really shows, ooh, that's pretty. I'm just trying to keep it monochrome to match with the tray. So I'm gonna do a lot more gold on this one right here. I'm so sorry about the feedback. I just heard that for the first time. And the gold here. This the detail on the monarchs molds are just beautiful. A little bit of bronze on this one, just to give it some depth along the edges. There's a little bit right here. Wow. Love, love, love. All right. So now this is kind of a darker tray. So I'm going to lighten it up with just the gold. I think the gold will be pretty. Just around the very edge. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks good. Just dipping my finger in the gilding wax. Doesn't matter what kind you use. You can use paint, gilding wax. This just adds another layer. Yeah. Let me show you this one. It's really hard to show. Let's go this way. <laughs> okay, so basically, what we've done is we've transformed, transformed my wall that has these silver trays, and I've added some photographs to them, and I used the iron orchid mold and the air dry clay. Uh, I want to say thank you for joining me, and I know there are some questions on here. I'm going to answer them as soon as I get off the camera. 